are you having trouble fixing your interface? If so, I've got great news. Troubleshooting is a repeatable process, and I'm gonna teach that process to you while solving some of the common issues that I have had, at least, with the uh, Line 6 UX1. This will also apply to the UX2, but it'll really apply to any interface because troubleshooting is a repeatable process. What is up, Yoshis? My name is Beth and I run Steadfast Descent, and today I would like to teach you how to troubleshoot problems you might be having. To troubleshoot, you have to follow the signal flow and identify the issue that is happening. So for example, if you plug in your UX1, you plug in your interface, and you plug in your mic, and there is no sound, follow the signal chain and see where there could be problems happening. So first things first, we have our very first input, which if you are playing a guitar, that's the guitar is your sense of input. If you're plugged into a mic, your voice or whatever you're recording is actually the input sound. I realize that probably that is not the issue. I mean, you play your guitar through your amp, you know it works. So you, your voice is literally making sounds, you know it works. So probably no issues happening there. Now the next line of issue might be either the mic or maybe it's your cable. If your cable from your guitar into your interface isn't working, that could be a problem. That is a testable thing that we can do. Your mic might be a little more difficult to test if you don't have multiple mics, but if you do have multiple mics, you just swap out the mic and make sure it is or isn't the mic. So then we get to the interface. So if everything is signaling from your input into the interface, and it seems to be okay, well then, we gotta keep following the signal flow. So from your interface, you've got a cable that goes into your computer. This cable needs to be okay. The other thing is that your interface may or may not have a gain switch. On the UX1, it's a knob. And uh, yeah, so if you're not getting any sound, it could be because your output is put all the way to zero, and so you're just not getting any sound. Not because there's no sound going through, but because you can't hear it because your output is zero. So set your output at wherever you feel like it should go. Then the other thing is that your gain might be set way too low. So, you know, just twist that bad boy around and see if you're not getting any more sound after that. So in our signal chain, we've started from our input and we've made it all the way to the computer. In the computer, there is still a signal chain, a flow of the signal that is going from, you know, your input into your DAW. This is a little bit less linear and a little more meta, so bear with me here as we process this signal flow and we troubleshoot all of the places where you might be having issues. First off, in your DAW, you may not have your interface selected as the input. In Logic, this is a quick fix. You just pre select Logic Preferences Audio and you make sure that the UX1 or UX2 or whatever your interface is, is selected as the input. Now, if it's not showing up as a potential input, well then, you might need to go back in and install some drivers and make sure everything's registered, deal with all of the technical software side of this signal chain. If you don't know how to set up your UX1 or UX2, I've made a video and that solves a lot of problems because if you have the red light, you need to make it turn into the green light so that it will make sound. This involves a long process. Again, I've already made that video, so if you're uh, worried about that software side of things in terms of not making sound, that is the next place I would suggest you go. Now within your DAW, oftentimes there's also gain structure. This will become important for the next problem, but your gain structure is going to need to be set in your DAW also. So if you don't have enough gain, no matter, like if you have a good signal and not enough gain, you're not gonna get much sound. And after that, we get to, you know, pass the computer and in into like the speakers thing. So it's like, okay, what do you have your speakers set to in your DAW? In Logic, it's Logic Preferences Audio, and then it's like, what's your output? Okay, is your output the UX1? Are you plugged in with your headphones to the UX1? Or is it built-in output? Are you plugged in with your headphones to your computer? Are you plugged in with your speakers to your computer? Then it could be an issue between the cable and the speaker, and it could be a speaker issue. But as you can see, this process of following the signal flow shows you all of the different places you can check for issues in order to solve your problems. So the second issue I'd like to highlight with this process and help us process this more is if you're having hiss or static. Now we've already outlined the entire signal chain and the flow from your guitar or your voice to the DAW and or your speakers. So static can happen in a lot of different places on this chain. First of all, static might be happening in the room you are recording in. If you have your mic set up in a room that's not really treated for sound, you might have issues. This might manifest in hiss or static. Now my room is really close to my kitchen and in my kitchen I have a really loud fridge. So oftentimes I find that my hiss and my static is directly related to my fridge. So that's like all way over on the one side of the input that we can check and we can 
test. Now, if you're having issues with static from your guitar, sometimes what happens is actually the electrical impulse of your room might be messing with your signal cables. So if you don't have shielded cables and there's a current flowing and your cable is near enough to the current, it might make a hiss. So try and check all of your cables, and I mean all of your cables, and make sure that they are far away from the electricity. Try recording with different modes on, like turn your lights off, unplug your computer, plug your computer into a different outlet, move the electrical flow from your outlet. All of these things I have known to cause hiss and static, and in some cases, if this is the cause of the issue and you are testing it along your signal flow, you will find that it will solve problems. Now, also, again, if your cables aren't shielded, sometimes just getting a shielded cable will solve this problem for you. Once it's in your DAW, there's not really a lot of likelihood that there's hiss or static, but you might as well update your drivers and make sure that all of the software end is up to date, or at least do a quick Google search to make sure that there is or isn't any known issues with hiss or static based on, you know, your interface that you're working with. In the UX1's case, there are not very many documented cases that aren't solvable with the aforementioned issues that I just mentioned. Now, I know it's a bit of a bummer, but once you're in the DAW and once you have your signal, there are ways that you can take out that hiss or static using noise gates, using EQ to pull out that particular frequency. And there's specific software that you can also get that will specifically go in and take out the hiss. Now this of course requires extra processing power and it's much better to just do, you know, take care of the business at the source than it is to like do this kind of a workaround. But that is an option and that is one thing where it's like you are adding actually some hiss reduction in your signal flow in terms of just inside the DAW so that by the time it gets to your headphones, you're in better shape. Now this also leads me to the point which is, are you sure that the hiss isn't in your headphones? Because again, if we're following the entire signal flow chain, we gotta go from input to output. And so knowing this, as long as your headphones aren't normally providing hiss, and so it is actually in fact the recording, you will find out very quickly. <laughs> now this might not seem like it actually ties in, but if you're having issues connecting with Podfarm, you can follow the same principles. Follow the signal flow from input to output. Granted, if Podfarm isn't connecting, a lot of the flow that you're gonna be following is actually within the computer, and so it might be a little harder in your brain to follow the signal flow and know exactly where it's going and why it's going there. But oftentimes, Podfarm won't connect because your interface isn't registered. So again, with the video I mentioned before, make sure you get your system all set up and you have everything downloaded and everything registered and everything is actually working on a software point of view. So I realize that this is a really general way of solving issues and it may or may not be actually helpful, especially once you get into the computer where there's a lot of other different chains of signal that can be going and that can be going wrong without you even knowing about it. So if you're still having problems, go ahead and let us know in the comments and we'll do our best to try and help you find a solution for whatever problems you are having. And if you're trying to help someone, please also try to identify where in the signal chain that everything is getting messed up. So has this been helpful? Let us know. We're gonna have a wonderful conversation down in the comments, I hope. If this video has helped you, it helps me if you leave it a like. And if you're interested in learning more about this stuff because you're a solo home musician, go ahead and subscribe because that's exactly the kind of content that comes out on this channel. And if you've made it this far, thank you so very much for watching.